guys, it's Tomato Da, and today's video you're gonna see how I make phone charms. I have all of these bigger clay canes saved up over the course of maybe three years, and I've developed this weird attachment to them because majority of them took a lot of effort to make. So I wanted to store these memories in this video, I guess. My original plan was to actually make them into candy charms, but I completely lost the motivation to make candy charms, and I have been pretty addicted to hoarding beads, so I'm gonna make them into phone strap charms instead. First, I'm going to drill a hole into each clay slice to turn them into beads. Drilling straight down actually isn't like that easy, so it takes a while for me to get the hang of, which is why I'm going to drill the uglier canes first until I'm more confident. That way, if I mess up, I can just make second sale products or save them up for a different project where like the hole doesn't matter. And because it is clay, the friction from the drill does melt it in this like weird way, but I can easily pick it out. I think it might just be a Fimo clay thing, cause some of my Primo canes, they don't react like that. Now, I'm going to take my fish string thing, and as you can see, it's very curvy. So in order to straighten it, I'm going to wrap it around tightly around something flat like this piece of glass, and then I'm going to fill a container with hot water. Next, I'm going to dunk in the glass and yell, WHO ARE YOU WORKING FOR?! Once it cools down, I'm going to take it out of the water and roughly dry it off. Then I'm going to try to cut the strings only on one side so that I can keep the fold in the middle. Now I'm going to set them aside and begin coordinating the beads. I bought this bead tray from the Dollar Tree store. Surprise, surprise, right? The Dollar Tree craft section be bumpin'. Anyways, I'm going to use it to help contain my beads and help me like coordinate them better, I guess. Trying to see and decide what beads go well with what combination is like very time consuming. Honestly, it's the most torturous part of this project for me because my eyes get really tired and I second guess myself a lot. One moment, I'm like, this looks good with this. Then the next moment, I'm like, yo, that looks like garbage. But you know, once that ordeal is done, I get to move on to my most favorite and therapeutic part of the project, assembling. First, I'm going to loop in a small crimp bead into the middle of the fish wire where that crease is, and then fold the two ends of the strings together and drop in the rest of the beads. Once everything is in, I am going to tie it closed using two crimp beads. The second crimp bead is bigger than the first one, and the string is going to follow through into the smaller bead again in this way. Using sharp tweezers definitely helps with this part. But once I like the placement of the crimp beads, I'm going to shut the smaller one with pliers. You can see I lifted up the smaller crimp bead a little bit before I closed it. That's because I want to give the beads on the charm slight wriggle room. I don't want the beads to be crammed in too tight or else it's gonna look kind of stiff. I want the charm to flow a bit more gracefully, but that is just my preference. Next, I'm going to cut off the excess and add a jump ring into the bigger crimp bead. I'm going to add a lobster clasp strap to that jump ring and done. Here are all the different phone straps that I made. My fingers hurt, my neck hurts, my shoulders hurt. But my brain is happy because making these is very therapeutic for me and I just love the outcome for all of them. If you guys are wondering, how do I attach these to my phone? Well, no worries fam, I got you with this video. Go watch it and give me views. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll be selling these at Anime St. Louis and see you guys next time. Bye bye!